Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to root any Android phone running on Android 13, 14 or even Android 15. For this tutorial, I will be using Google Pixel 6a running on Android 15. But these tabs are same for almost all the Android devices, including a OnePlus, Poco, Redmi, Samsung, Realme and nothing phones. If you are ready to unlock the full potential of your device, let's dive in. Uh, but before we start, a quick disclaimer. Rooting your device will void your warranty and may cause issue if not done correctly. Make sure to back up all your important data before proceeding. Rooting also involves some risk, so follow this step carefully. I am not responsible for any damage that may occur during the process. And remember, while this method works perfectly for many devices, I don't recommend trying it on Oppo or Vivo phones, as they are not well suited for the rooting. If you have a Samsung device, I made a dedicated video a year ago, which you can watch it from here. Now, let's get started. So here I am on my Pixel 6a. Let me show you which Android version I am using by heading into settings. So let me open settings. Scroll down to about phone. And in model as you can see this is Pixel 6a. Now if I scroll down here you will be see my device is running on Android 15. So we are going to root this device. And guys these steps are pretty straightforward. Before we move to the first step uh, let me show you my device is rooted or not. So I have installed RootSecker basic app uh, for this purpose. I will provide the direct link to download this app in the description. So as you can see, uh, device is not rooted yet. Let's root this. Now to root any Android device, we need to unlock the bootloader first. Unlocking the bootloader on Pixel, Samsung, nothing or OnePlus devices follow the same as with Pixel 6a. However, if you are using Xiaomi or Realme phone, uh, the uh, process is slightly different. I will provide a link in the description below to guide uh, you through that. Alright, uh, let's proceed with the unlocking the bootloader. So head over to setting and enable developer option. Uh, go to about phone and tap on build number 7 times until you see a message you are now a developer. Developer option is enabled, go back and here is developer option. I scroll down until you see OEM unlocking. Now click on the button enable to allow the bootloader to be unlocked. It will give you a warning just go ahead and enable it. Once it's done, scroll down a bit further and enable USB debugging. This is important as it follow your phone to communicate with your computer. So both options are now enabled. Let's move to the PC screen. Uh, the next step is to download the necessary tools to unlock the bootloader. So head over to this website, I will provide a link in the description box. From there, you can download SDK platform tool. This is an essential toolkit which is used to communicate with your device. Once the download is complete, go ahead and extract the zip file. Alright, files are now extracted and ready to use. Now it's time to connect your device with the PC. So let me connect it. As you can see, my device is connected. And you see a notification uh, that says USB debugging connected. Next, we need to open the command prompt in the platform tool folder. To do this, just go to the address bar at the top of the folder and type cmd and hit enter. This will open the terminal in the platform tool directory. Now in the terminal type adp devices to check device is connected or not. When you run this command, you will see a prompt on the device asking to allow USB debugging from this PC. So enable this toggle always allow on this computer and then click on allow. On the PC, you might also need to grant network permission for the ADB to work. Initially, you might notice that uh, device is listed as unauthorized. Uh, but after giving the necessary permission, run the ADB device command again and there you go. Our device is connected successfully. Now type ADB reboot bootloader command to boot your device into the bootloader mode. Once you hit enter, your device will be reboot into the bootloader after a few seconds. Bootloader mode lets you access and modify your device core functions, which is crucial for routing and installing custom software. Our device is now in bootloader mode. You will notice our uh, device state is marked as locked, which means the bootloader is locked yet. So let's unlock it. To do this, run this command fastboot flashing unlock and then hit enter. Keep in mind that this process will erase all your data. Once the command is sent, a confirmation prompt will appear on your device screen. You will see option do not unlock the bootloader, but we are going to unlock it. So use volume keys to move the selector to unlock the bootloader. Here we go, a simple press power button to confirm. The bootloader is now successfully unlocked. 
you will see that device state now shows unlocked, confirming that our bootloader was successfully unlocked. It's time to reboot the device. Just press the power button to reboot it. You can also write fastboot reboot command in the terminal. And during the initial boot, uh, you might notice unlocked bootloader warning message. This is completely normal and you can continue using your device as usual. Since the boot process might take some time, I'm going to fast forward it. Our device has successfully booted up. Let's quickly check the bootloader status in developer option. So let me enable the developer option again. Uh, so here as you can see a message bootloader is already unlocked. It's mean we have successfully unlocked the bootloader of our device. So our first step toward routing any Android phone is complete. Let's move on to the next step. But before we need to enable uh, the USB debugging option again. So let me enable it. Once everything is done, let's move on to the next step. And guys, this is the most important part. Downloading the correct firmware for your device. Make sure to download the correct firmware version that exactly matches your build number. If you download the wrong firmware, your device could be bricked or enter in a dead state. So accuracy is crucial. Now let me guide you through this process with an example. Let's say you want to download your Samsung device. First go to the device setting and check your build number. And make sure to note it down. In the case of Samsung, uh, pay special attention to the last letter of the build number. Uh, it donates the specific firmware version you need. You can also find this information in the baseband version. So copy it and note it down for accuracy. For instance, this is our build number. Simply enter the exact value into the Google and write a uh, firmware Samsung or some Samsung firmware. Uh, once you're done, hit enter and open the first website SamFW. And here we found our exact firmware, simply download it into your system. So follow the same procedure for your Android device. But guys, if you're not able to find your firmware, just drop a comment below. And I will provide you with the correct URL for your device. Now back to the video, let's download the firmware for our Pixel 6a. We will follow the same procedure as before. Here is our build number, copy it and search it for the firmware. And open the first website. And here we go. This is our firmware. Let me quickly download it. And guys, firmware size can vary from uh, 2 GB to 4 GB. While the firmware is downloading, let's go ahead and download the Magisk APK. We will be use this to patch the boot image. You can either download it uh, directly into your phone and install it. Or do as I am doing here, install Magisk using the command line. So let me quickly download the Magisk APK. So Magisk is downloaded. Uh, let's open it folder and copy this APK and paste into the platform folder tools. And guys do the same, open the terminal by typing cmd in the address bar. And type adb install magix.apk or whatever the file name is. Make sure your device is connected to the PC when you run this command. So magix is now installed on our device. We will be use magix later. But for now let's check uh, our firmware is downloaded or not. So yes our firmware is downloaded. Uh, let me quickly extract it. As the file is big, it may take time, so I'm going to fast forward it. Firmware is extracted, let's open it. And guys, we need to also extract this file. So let's extract it. Uh, now guys, listen carefully. If the extracted firmware contains two files, boot.img or boot underscore init.img uh, then in this case you need to choose boot underscore init file uh, for upcoming process however if the extracted firmware doesn't have boot.image file then check for a payload.bin file in this case you will need to extract the boot image from payload.bin i will provide the link in the description that show you how to extract it or if you want a video on this then let me know in the comment so here is our boot.img uh, let's copy this and paste into our device and guys, as I told you, if you have a boot.init file, then you need to paste that file into your phone. Once the file is pasted, let's move back to the phone screen. 
So on the phone screen, first open the file manager and check the boot image is copied or not. And here we go, our boot.img file. Next, uh, open the matches kpk and here tap on install and then uh, click on select and patch a file. Navigate to the boot image that you copied from PC and magic will patch the file in just few seconds. So the patch boot image is saved in the download folder. Let's confirm it in file manager. And here we go, our patch boot image. Now we need to transfer this file to the computer. So let's move to the PC screen. On the PC, connect your device via USB if not already connected. And here is our uh, patched file. So copy this file and paste into the platform tool folder. Once the patch image is copied, open the command prompt in the platform tool folder as we did earlier. Now type adb reboot bootloader to boot a device into the bootloader mode. So my device is now booted into the fastboot mode. Once it is booted, type fastboot devices to check uh, devices in fastboot mode or not. So yes, our device is in fastboot mode. Now type fastboot, flashboot uh, and patch boot image file name uh, just like this and then hit enter. This will flash the patch boot image into your device. Once it is successful, you will see a finished message. As you can see here, now you can reboot your device uh, by typing fastboot reboot. Once you hit enter, your device will reboot. And the first boot might take time, so I'm going to fast forward it. So our device has booted. Let's open Magisk. It might prompt you to reboot, but we will do that later. And there you go. As you can see, Magisk is installed and version is 27.0. Now let me quickly install Root Checker Basic App. So Root Checker Basic App is installed. Let's open it. And click on Verify Root and Grant Full Access. And boom, as you can see, our device is not rooted successfully. And that's it, you have successfully rooted your Android device with Magisk. Your device is now fully rooted and ready for all exciting customization. And guys, if you encountered any error or issue during the process, or if you need any further assistance, feel free to leave a comment below. And we'll do my best to assist you. If you follow this video helpful, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and please consider subscribing the channel. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one. This is Jarvis signing off.